Tonight I decree the spirit of the game changer upon your life. Yes, Lord. I decree the spirit of the game changer upon your life. Yes, Lord. I decree the spirit of the protocol breaker upon your life. I decree the breakers unto anointing upon your life. That which your whole generational line could not do. That which they said that it was impossible to do. That which they said you were not qualified to do the Lord said that today he's making you a generational chain breaker yes. he said you are a game changer yes. you are a game changer yes. if they used to die early yes. you've changed the game to 120 years of age yes. if they used to worship Satan you have changed the game to a Christ game the Lord said that today Pouring out an anointing that will cause you to have the spirit that which the daughters of the hell of that carry to break systems, to break chains, to rewrite the laws in the realms of the spirit. You are not entitled to be mediocre, you are not entitled to do the norm. I break you out of the ordinary, I break you out of the ordinary. Awake, arise, in time bright, women of fire. You have been called to advance and to establish the frontiers of the kingdom of our God and of his Christ now. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? The end time bride is a center of incubation where weak ladies encounter the spirit of burning and are forged into women of power and grace who are ready to set their world on fire for Jesus. Arise and shine, O end time bride. Your time is now. What God is about to do is he's about to shift and break protocol. Every time I deliver this particular message, that means God is already a season. And let me tell you, the Bible says that the prophet was for a sign and a wonder. And so every time God gives me this word, every time it's stuck in my belly, that means God is about to shake the atmosphere. He's about to break rank. He's about to break protocol. He's about to show you why he's called Jehovah Nisi. Every single time. As a preacher, you know the seasons of your message. When God gives it to you, you know what time it is. And the Bible says that the prophet carries the burden of the people. Need I remind you of a prophet who had to lay on his side for the sin of Israel. And so when the burden arises like this, you must know that God wants to do something new. He wants to shake something. And you know I'm all for a good rebuke. All for a good rebuke. Professional rebuker. But when God gives me these type of prophetic messages, it's, I'm telling you, Fiona, I'm telling you, Numbers 27. Numbers 27, verse 1. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Makur, the son of Manasseh, from the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these were the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Terzah. And they stood before Moses, before Eleazar the priest, and before the leaders and all the congregation, by the doorway of the tabernacle of meeting, saying, 
Our father died in the wilderness, but he was not in the company of those who gathered together against the Lord, in company with Korah, but he died in his own sin, and he had no sons. Why should the name of our father be removed from among his family because he had no son? Give us a possession among our father's brothers. So Moses brought their case before the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak what is right. You shall surely give them a possession of inheritance among their father's brothers and cause the inheritance of their father to pass to them. And you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a man dies and has no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughter. If he has no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to his father's brothers. And if his father has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to the relative closest to him in his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be to the children of Israel a statute of judgment, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go up into this Mount Abarim and see the land which I have given to the children of Israel. And when you have seen it, you also shall be gathered to your people as Aaron your brother was gathered. Amen. Amen. So this story is very simple. There was a man called Zahelophad, which meant the firstborn, the first rupture. That, is what, that was the, the meaning of his name. Now he had been on the voyage that Moses had set out when he delivered the people who were in Egypt. And on the way, we know that they died. Some of them died due to the nature of their sin because they disobeyed Christ. And then you have some that died from their own sins. And so the Bible here is saying that his daughters were confirming that their father did not die due to the other circumstances of men. But he died for his own sin which was very important to note because when you did something wrong and you were cursed and died, then you essentially have cursed your generation. This is why we pray against generational curses so much. And then also, when you go into Numbers 26, you will see the genealogy of a whole bunch of people. The reason why the book is called Numbers is because it had to take a census of all the people of Israel in that time. Now take note that Zahelophad had died already. And so when Moses was told to go and get a census of the people of God, his name was not there because he was dead. May your name not be erased out of history. May the Lord make your name a landmark. I always find it suspicious when people die and their name ends right there. That is a curse. That is a curse. I think that your name should be called to remembrance when you are not in the presence or when you are not here, when you are daily departed. May the Lord allow you to live a long, prosperous life. That even after 120 years of age, your name will be called. And be called for a good thing. You see, back then, when the census was taken, it was taken of the headship, which were men. And so if there were no men represented in your household, then you were as good as dead as a woman. So this census was taken. 
And the census was taken because God said that I want you to begin to divide the lot and the land for the people of Israel. See, God is a God who makes you take possession, especially when your name is mentioned in the right places. He will give you ownership of things. And so the Bible says that a good name is better than riches. So if your name was not mentioned, then you are not getting the riches and or the territory of the Lord. And some of you, you can think back to your grandparents or your great grandparents. What does their name say now? Some of you, you hear of your grandparents and you hear negative stories and you hear comical stories and you hear stories of how they were has-beens. May you never be a has-been. You know those rappers that have one song and after that we don't know nothing about them. May that not be your life. Your life is not meant to be a has-been. My marriage was never called to be a has-been marriage. It must remain relevant all the days of my life. Your children must remain relevant. Your business has to remain relevant. And when you carry relevancy, you also carry the spirit of education. Because anybody who stays relevant is always well informed. Today I was speaking to somebody and I said that you cannot be a lazy Christian and cover it up with the Bible. When you have a career, make sure you are well learned. Make sure you study. Don't sit there and pray and not do anything about it. Because faith without works is what? Be well informed. Make education sexy. Make it look attainable. Make it look good. The worst thing you can be is, a, is an ill-informed teacher. Imagine an ill-informed doctor. Whatever area of your life, you must be well informed. You must have a level of knowledge in your head that makes and keeps you relevant. The people of God are lazy. And I'm going to go fast and pray that I won't put in the work. You put together an LLC, but you don't know nothing else after that. You expect God to make you a sign and a wonder in your business, yet you are not, you are ill-informed. This is not okay. As a child of God, when you speak, you must be articulate. When you speak, you must have a level of knowledge. You cannot be dumb and call yourself a Christian because the Bible makes me understand that the illiterate, even by way of the Spirit, they were birthed out in knowledge. Bible says study to show yourself approved. But yet, Christians are the number one laziest people and we cover it up with prayer and scripture. But I'm saying this because the daughters of Zahelophad, they were well informed. They understood that many years ago that there was a promise that they, the Israelites, would possess the land of Canaan. That is what caused them. That is what drove them to make sure that they possessed the land because they had read up on it. In addition to the prayers, in addition to the fasting, in addition to the sowing, they were not lazy. You cannot be a lazy Christian. You must be a well-informed Christian about the right knowledge, not the wrong knowledge. Some of you have the wrong knowledge in your head. You know too much about the shade room and too little about the business God has called you to. Too much about pop culture, but you don't know what God has called you to. Your office 
You don't read nothing about the office God has called you to. These girls were well informed. They knew exactly what they were fighting for. They knew that a decree had went out that they had to possess Canaan and they knew that Israel ought to do it. See, being well informed is not just in the book. It's also in the spirit as well too. You should know the times and seasons. That's why I'm saying that tonight, God, what I see is tectonic plates. If those of you who know. You see, there are shiftings in the atmosphere. That is the image God keeps showing me. He said that I'm shifting things supernaturally. And so these daughters here, their names were not even called in the genealogy. They carried a level of understanding of the promise, but their names were not in the book. Again, they were so well informed that they decided not to sit back when the census and the, the, the land was being divided. They decided not to sit back. Some of you, you would say, well, my father's name is not in it, so there's no need for me to go to the sharing of the land. Mercy upon you. Carelessness. Many of you, you've lost blessings on the altar of sin and carelessness. The Bible did not say for lack of cancer or cancer thereof. It says lack of knowledge, my people perish. Lack of knowledge, my people perish. When you read the word of God, you must read it through the messianic eye. What is Christ saying? Where is Christ in this? Before you can prophetically exegete or sermonize to anyone, you must know the history of the Bible. Because nowadays we have a lot of teachers. We have a lot of heresy. Heresy is when you preach something that is not in the Bible and you cause people to leave the faith. And we have a lot of misinterpretation of the Bible as well in the name of hyper grace. So me, I like well-informed people by way of the spirit. You don't have to speak proper English, but you got to speak proper spirit. Some of you get warped into the English of things and not the spirit of things. So if someone has an accent or they stutter and they're given the word of God, you feel as if it's time to sleep. But that shows your carnality. So these girls had an understanding that I need to make sure we show up, not just one of us, all of us. May your, may your family become so unified that you can fight together. Because that is one major point about this story. They were so unified. Some of you, all you need is another sister with you. All you need is one more brother with you. All you need is your father to gird up his loins. All you need is your mother to finally put down the phone of gossip and lift up the phone of prayer. And your family is set. But you keep fighting alone. All you need is just one more person. That's all you need. That's all you need. And so these women here, they decided that not only will we sit back or go to the meeting and, and, and cry ourselves, because some of you love the pity party stuff. They said, no, we're going to go with the facts. And we will go and challenge the law that is at hand. They didn't go with tears and they didn't go with pride, but they went with the spirit of God that prompted them, stay there, stay there. So they went 
and they began to hear the discussions and they said, no way. My father did not labor for you to go and take everything we own. Some of you, especially those from the Caribbean, the Africas, you know how it is. They steal your stuff and all the things your parents worked for, it's null and void. May you enjoy and may your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren enjoy everything that your hand has worked for. You will not have the stories of your fathers, your great grandfathers, your great great grandfathers who had a bunch of land, who owned hospitals and police station and they owned mad cars but you still walking in the train station who used to give money out to people but now you are depending on America to pay your college tuition that's what I always tell people it's cool but stop living off the old glory you, if you are not careful, you will keep riding on the old coattail of glory. One powerful thing about Apostle's story is that he always tells me, the day that he realized that he was not going to make it to the NBA, the day he decided that I'm not going to ride off this glory. And so when he speaks of it, he speaks of it from a place of healing. And not a place of a, I should have been. There's a difference. When he speaks of it, he speaks of it like I have triumphed. Some of you are riding off the glory of 10 years ago. I used to be skinny. I used to have a small waist. Well, you don't now. Let's get to it. Let's start working out. Let's eat healthy again. I'm serious. My parents used to have money. We used to ride in Benzes. You are riding the MTA. Let me provoke your spirit a bit. Riding off of lost glory. We acknowledge what God has done, but Paul said never looking back unless I see how far I've come. So when I'm riding off my lost glory, is to thank God for how far he has brought me. Enough with the I used to. And I want you guys to find me the scripture. There's a scripture in the word of God that says that a fool, only a fool says, gone are the good old days. That's when you live off past glory. The Bible said it. It says that someone who is not wise is the only person. Do not say, where were the former days, why were the former days better than these? For you do not inquire wisely concerning this. If you don't know, it's an abomination. Because the, the Bible says that we move from glory to glory. Our path shines brighter and brighter. So how is it that back then was better than now? That means there's a problem with you. Your marriage should get better each year, not worse. Your children should get better each year, not worse. Your relationship should get better each year, not worse. Your circumstance should get better each year, but not worse. And so when you begin to see these discrepancies in your life, you must know that something is wrong. When you realize that your life has taken a turn from worse to worser, remember these girls. They said, we won't ride off the coattail of our dad's former glory. He's dead. Because his name is not even there. So people will not even consider us. It would be different if his name were in the books. And for his name to be in the book, it would require that he had a son. You see, back in the day, women were not considered at all. They only counted the headships, even though women took a very huge role in those times. 
So the Bible says that they went to Moses, and I want us to put that part up. They went to Moses, and when they approached Moses, they approached him with facts. Someone say facts. Facts. And they stood before Moses, before Eleazar the priest, and before the leaders and all the congregation by the doorway of the tabernacle of meeting. Now, again, it's important to be well informed and not just preach a preaching because you heard it somewhere. The reason why it's important that they state by the doorway of the tabernacle of meeting is because women were not allowed in that area. Women were considered unclean spiritually. So you don't have any business getting near the altar at all. So for them to go that far, that's a level of gangster. That's a level of protocol breaking. That's a level of, I'm going to get this done by the Spirit of God. Continue. Our father died in the wilderness, but he was not in the company of those who gathered against the Lord. In the company of Korah. Again, they were well informed. They were well informed. Some of you don't know nothing about your backgrounds and you think it's okay. If nobody is physically there, you should now be praying that the spirit of the Lord should reveal things to you. And some of you, your parents won't tell you much. And so lest you pray and the Holy Spirit begins to show you things. That's why your prayer life is just all over. You don't even know where to hit. But these girls understood. They said, don't add my father to those people who had sinned against the Lord because they were called the accursed. But he did his own thing. But he died in his own sin. Not because he he sinned against the Lord. Everything in the Bible should be highlighted to you. Continue. Why should the name of our father be removed from amongst his family because he had no son? Give us a possession among our father's brother. They were bold in their asking because they had a level of information that required them to be so bold because I believe if Moses would have refuted them the next thing they would have went back into the book of Leviticus into the book of Exodus actually and began to reveal what the Lord had said about Israel that they would take possession but Moses knew who he was dealing with continue So Moses brought their case before the Lord. It's very easy for you to want an answer today, right now, here. But it is also wisdom that you always inquire of the Lord and you wait upon him. And this goes back to the shepherds. If you text if you, resp- if you email, if you send a smoke signal and you don't get a response, just know that some, some of us that are called into leadership, we like to inquire of the Lord. Because if you're not careful, you will be the same person that blames me that I told you to go into nursing. Remember Adam went to God and said, you gave me this woman. And so Moses, he probably had heard that story. So he said, let me go check up the Lord before you come and blame me. Continue. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, the daughters of Zahalophad speak what is what? Right. What is what? Right. It's important that you highlight these things in your head because they didn't speak their emotions. They didn't speak their opinions. They spoke what the Lord was saying in that season. This is why you must know the word of God. 
Because at times your emotions won't cut it in prayer. What is the Lord saying? What is the promise of God concerning your life? What does the scripture say? Because the word of God is exalted above him. That's the only thing that's exalted. So if you don't give him back his word, how can he comply to your prayer? They spoke what was right. You shall surely give them a possession of inheritance among their fathers, brothers, and cause the inheritance of their father to pass to them. I was watching a movie about this. And the Bible, or the movie depicted that as they were walking to the sanctuary, there were men and women there, and they were murmuring, like, what are these people doing? They are breaking protocol. They are breaking rank. They are doing something that we've never seen done before. And so we're either with them or not. And so the Bible says that the Lord said what he had to say continue and you shall speak to the children of Israel so five girls caused a governmental shift in the system five girls were able to change a decree five girls were able to change the law that had been set many many years ago Five nobodies. Five nobodies. But you, a somebody, what can you do? If a man dies and has no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass on to his daughter. A Bible full of this begat that, begat that, begat that, which mentioned barely any women. Now, now, because of five girls, because of five girls, now women were a part of the system. Because of five girls, who knew exactly the word of the Lord. Five girls who had been travailing as a family. Five girls who knew the word of the Lord said that the wicked, the wicked, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. But the wealth of the righteous should not be taken and given to the unjust. They understood this. Continue. If he has no daughter, then you shall give it to give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, then he shall give his inheritance to his father's brothers. Continue. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go up into Mount Abram and see the land which I have given to the children of Israel. And when you have seen it, you shall also, you also shall be gathered to your people as Aaron, your brother, was gathered. For in the wilderness of Zin, during the strife of the congregation, you rebelled against my command to hollow me at the waters before the eyes. There at the what? I don't need this part. Someone say five girls. Say five girls. five girls. When you continue reading, you realize that because they had changed the law, now their marriages also had to go under the law of Christ. Because if I've given you your father's inheritance and no inheritance should go outside the tribe, now your marriage now has to be subjected to my lordship. So you can't go and marry outside of that either. And so now they have caused another shifting in the realms of the spirit. Now, now 
there is equally yokeness in the realms of the spirit. And so these five girls secured the future for the women of Israel. These five girls made it okay to have a woman as the firstborn. So if you are a firstborn daughter, you are now a part of the number for a reason. Because of five girls who decided to stand up for something. And so today you might be wondering, girl, what are you talking about so long? The Lord said that these are game changers. And tonight I decree the spirit of the game changer upon your life. Yes, Lord. I decree the spirit of the game changer upon your life. Yes, Lord. I decree the spirit of the protocol breaker upon your life. I decree the breakers unto anointing upon your life. That which your whole generational line could not do. That which they said that it was impossible to do. That which they said you were not qualified to do the Lord said that today he's making you a generational chain breaker yes. he said you are a game changer yes. you are a game changer yes. if they used to die early yes. you've changed the game to 120 years of age yes. if they used to worship Satan you have changed the game to a Christ game the Lord said that today Pouring out an anointing that will cause you to have the spirit that which the daughters of the hell of that carry to break systems, to break chains, to rewrite the laws in the realms of the spirit. You are not entitled to be mediocre, you are not entitled to do the norm. I break you out of the ordinary, I break you out of the ordinary. He said he's making your forehead like flint. Yes, Lord. You will bulldoze in the area of business. You will enter into a place of the cooperation. You will not just be an LLC all your life. You are breaking into the hedge funds in the area of marriage. He said you won't just do a five-year stint. He said I'm giving you a lifetime partner and I'm breaking that which the enemy thought. You will not be widowed because the anointing on your life causes your spouse to live long and prosperous. Oh, say of the Lord today. You gotta understand when God is doing something. Jesus. Five girls were able to change the law. Five girls decided to know what the Spirit of God was saying concerning a situation. Tonight, if you are here, it is not by chance. It is not by mistake. I got invited to a huge conference, huge, huge conference. And I had to turn it down. I had to turn it down. And when I turned it down, it was because there was a wedding coming up and so I couldn't go. But when I turned it down, without anyone even knowing, because they didn't even send it through the emails, they sent it straight to my DMs. They said that, we wish to have you on this huge stage. And I said, the way things are, I have marriages it, that we prayed for coming up. No one knew about this. The man who married Apostle and I, he called us. He said, 
The Lord is making you guys go into territories that no African has entered. Jesus. He's raising your voice up to places that normal Africans who preach the gospel are not allowed to enter. And so today I come with you yeah. with an anointing that breaks the chains Jesus. where the accents don't go. The Lord said that your accents will go there yeah. where your culture does not go. Yeah. The Haitian anointing, we break it and we call you a systematic Jesus. chain breaker. Breaking anointed. Right. That is what they did. Yeah. Where your accent is not supposed to go. Where your speech sounds too ghetto. Jesus. Where financially you don't deserve to be. God said that. The, the word of God says. Don't just pull you out of the dung hills to put you back in the projects. Oh I don't just pull you out of the dung hills to make you look like you were saved and that's it. He said, I will send you with kings. Hey! With kings. With kings. With kings. With kings. stuff out of the spirit because the thing that is not normal the places where you don't belong where your skin color thinks they can limit you hey. where your speech thinks they can limit you hey. where your finances think they can limit you hey. we call upon the God hey. who rewrote the law what for the tortoise of the hell of hell Tonight we call upon that anointing. You forgot about the little nobody that ended up in the palace that was able to stop genocide. If you forgot, her name was Esther. She walked in on the scene in a time that it was not normal to go and see the king. There was a protocol to see the king. There was a time and a season. But when you are a pioneer, when you carry the game-changing anointing, uh -huh. only Makana Masuta, you end up walking on the scene Jesus. and every power hey. must bow down to the power that is inside of you. Jesus. After tonight, you cannot be limited. You will not be limited. I command you by the authority given to me in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. Enough with the LLC type of testimonies. Jesus. I'm talking about companies that are being on the market that are... Ah! Some of you don't apply for certain positions because in your mind and your work frame you don't have the degree for it but say of the Lord I am the Lord that changes laws I've changed the laws that was set many decades many centuries for five women There's an apostolic anointing tonight. There's an apostolic anointing tonight. Yes, Lord. There's a governmental rule anointing tonight. Yes, Lord. There's a rule of breaking governmental yes, protocol yes, tonight. Yes, I came as a prophet yes. to tell you, say of the Lord, I am breaking chains for your sake. such 
a time as this for such a time as this for such a time as this this church I always tell you guys I am not a person who resists the work of God all my life you can check with anybody who knows me the only thing I ask the Lord that if you're going to give us a church I need you to give us a church that when they come in desolate when they come in bound when they come in low you need to give us the testimony that in this house they move from glory to glory and the Lord responded to me and the Lord responded to me he said, I am giving you chain-breaking anointing. He said, I am giving you an influence of a church. Everyone who enters this church, they will carry a level of influence that will not be common to those around them. A level of impact that will not be common to those around them. I'm giving some of them voice a national 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 voice and so you can play with KFT if you want to but the covenant we went into before we started this thing the covenant still speaks you cannot dwell here and be planted here and end up as a nobody it is impossible it cannot happen my sincere prayer is that Lord give us a church where they never divorce let it be known as the church where all of them got married young and they died together in 120 years none of them divorced give us a church where they all own see ownership is one of the things we'll be talking about for the 21 day fast but i want you to understand that ownership is not just saying you own something but every time you own something you carry the spirit of Christ which means the spirit of Christ now owns something and once you are there you will lift up the altar of Christ and if your house is over there and your business is over there that means this whole block has to bow down to the Lordship of Christ and so ownership is expanding the kingdom of God ownership is advancement and so when we come together like this we don't have to pray about open heavens and we don't have to break territorial rule because the altar of Christ has been lifted up everywhere Ownership is so much bigger because now there is an altar of Christ being lifted up every day at 65 Tokini. And so the suicidal rate that is in Darien for the rich folks, for the rich people, it has to decrease. You understand? Your influence allows the altar of God to be raised because of five women they were able to change things tonight there's an assignment for you yes, Lord. the Lord told me to tell you there's an assignment for you a time sensitive assignment the ark could not be built by no one else but Noah Esther had to be the one there to save the Jews. Your assignment is time sensitive. And so if you don't get this word in your belly and understand 
that at the very least for the sake of your family you must break through for the sake of your family you have to succeed for the sake of your family the voice that God has given to you must extend across borders for the sake of your family you must now be a patron you must now be a benefactor see many of us we have become beneficiaries every day receiving every day receiving and we'll pray about help because we need help but when can you be the helper when can you be the helper this is why church folk are always upset with pastors when they look good because the expectation is I'm supposed to keep giving to you today I want to change your mind these girls didn't have a pity party they knew the word of the Lord they band together as one and they waged a good warfare they went into territories that were not fit for them unclean women how dare you enter that close how dare you these women were women who decided that I will not allow anything to limit me today you must decide you must decide that you will not allow anything to limit you it is not possible for things to keep limiting you my husband used to joke with me and say that you when it comes to social studies I don't know where you've been and I told him it's not that I don't see the slavery stuff. I'm very well informed on that. But what I gotta do with me? My skin color and me being a woman, it's a double negative already, even in the church arena. But what I gotta do with me? Because I've made up my mind. This is one of my favorite stories and most of you know, Ark of Women, I've done it with you before. What does limited mindsets have to do with me? What, the, what does that have to do with me? Yes, black people have been put back a thousand, a million years, all that good stuff. But I thought that we cut our umbilical cord. I thought that we were kingdom citizens. So though I acknowledge it, though I'm very well aware, you cannot racially profile me in any way. I'm telling you. You must decide that tonight is the last night. That you will be limited. You must decide that tonight is the last night. You must decide that me too, I will sit with kings. He does not just raise you out of the dung hills to put you back in the projects. He does not do that. He doesn't raise you out of the dung hills to put you in the same situation or worse. So you must intentionally decide that after tonight's prayers, I cannot be limited. I cannot be limited. My voice cannot be limited. My color cannot limit me. My race cannot limit me. My gender cannot limit me. My gender cannot limit me. You are a game changer. Yes. Make sure you put that as the title. Game changer. Game changer. No, no. I want you to feel it in your spirit. You see, you must hear these things. Because so I've learned sound bites are very important. Sound bites are very important. What you listen to is extremely important. If you keep hearing the same sound bite over and over and over, you believe it. I defy the armies of God. That was a sound bite. Goliath carried a sound bite. And he did not have to do much. 
But all he had to do was keep repeating that sound bite over and over and over. You are a black woman. You can never make it. You are a black man. You can never make it. You are a church girl. You can never make it. You are a church boy. You are limited. That's a sound bite. This is why the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, hearing what? The word of God. The sound bite, the sound bite that you hear is important. The sound bite that you hear. Tonight, the sound bite that must be in your head. I am a game changer. I am a game changer. I am a system breaker. I am a system breaker. Because of me. Because of me. God will rewrite the law. God will rewrite the law. That's the sound bite for you. Yes. If you hear something, I believe 13 or 16 times, um, Minister Cindy Trim was talking about it. She said, if you can hear something 13 times in a row, you believe it. That's what science says. But science mimics Christ. And the Bible already told us that your faith is only increased by your what? Hearing. And so if you choose not to listen to the word of God that is being preached on a consistent basis on the Monday to Friday when we are giving the word of the Lord on the middays, on the midnights on the Bible studies you are only doing yourself a disservice and when you don't hear the word of the Lord, you break rank you break rank how is it that Saul a whole king anointed as king you are not a priest but why go and sacrifice where you don't need to sacrifice because the sound bite that he was hearing you're not understanding what I'm telling you you must you must get this in your ear. You are a game changer. I am a game changer. You did not come into Christ to stay the same. You did not come into Christ to watch the generational curses that you prayed about just this year alone happen to you. Forget about the other years. This year alone, if you've been following KFT at least twice a week, at the very least twice a week, you have prayed prayers that you should not experience. We pray against everything under the sun. Saul heard the wrong thing and went and dedicated to an altar where he was not supposed to dedicate to. See, when you don't hear Christ, you get envious and you break rank. The brothers of Joseph I can boldly say they were foolish because if you listen to the dream they were all going to be put on it just so happened that Joseph might be a little higher than them but they were all going with Joseph but when you hear the wrong thing you begin to get jealous of people you begin to break rank but when you are on track you don't get trapped And when you are on course, you don't get cursed. And so what you hear is extremely important. You cannot sit around here hearing the woes of man and not the word of God. Tonight, I want us to pray. I want you to pray. And we're going into three dimensions of prayer. Before we ask for this game change and anointing, some of you, you need to pray this prayer. You are due to be helped by someone. But there's a power that averts your help. Moses was the one who helped them. Today in prayer, the Lord said that some of them, I, heaven has already sanctioned them to be favored. But man is resisting their favor. And that's because there's a spirit. How many people have promised you a job and at the last end, 
they tell you it was given to someone how many people have promised you money and they look like they were going to give it to you how many people have promised you an opportunity imagine Moses hearing from God that let them change the laws and Moses not saying it out loud and telling them nope you can't have it so heaven can favor you but if man doesn't then there's an issue and today whatever evil power averts your help whatever evil power does not allow people to fully come through when they say they will whatever evil power causes people to avert you whatever voice deters people from helping you today we must silence that voice we must silence that voice we must silence that voice and so I'll end with this what you hear is extremely important for years the daughters had been hearing that Israel was going to possess lands and so all they knew is that even if my father died the promise out there was that Israel was going to possess the land that was the sound bite that they heard over and over and over and over and today the sound bite that I want you to continue to hear is that you are a game changer you are a system breaker God has called you to rewrite some things in your family in your lineage in your generation you are not allowed to be mediocre your assignment makes you irreplaceable Noah's assignment made him irreplaceable in a time where there was no water, how dare you tell him to build an ark? Some of you, what God is asking you to do, it does not make generational sense. It doesn't make sense, but it makes signs. And so tonight I come with the prophetic word that God gave me. He said that there's a game-changing anointing here. There is an anointing of the game changer. It also falls under the pioneer's anointing. It's an anointing to bulldoze. It's an anointing to write the blueprint. It's an anointing to do what cannot be done, but is being done by the Spirit of the Lord. Tonight, the Lord will change you from a beneficiary to a benefactor. We don't rise by no knowledge. We rise by a revelation. Before I met my husband, the Lord told me that don't ever pray that, uh, what is it, Sammy? What is the people, the loans people? Sally, see, I don't even know them. That Sally Mae would be obstructed by the Russians. I never prayed those type of prayers. That Lord caused the loan forgiveness. The Lord told me that I would give you a large lump sum to pay off your student loans. And so I never prayed from the area of a beneficiary. That Lord caused the system to break for my sake. No. Nope. I said, Lord, you opened your mouth and said a large lump sum. Before the church even hit, I'm sitting there, my husband said, from work, I've been able to save 100K. I want to pay off your loans just like that. I never prayed, Lord, let the system break. Let Russia come and corrupt us. I'm serious, I never, I never desired those prayers. Because there are certain prayers that just, it does not fit who I am. Tonight you are a game changer. You are a system breaker. You are a law changer. Say, I am a law changer. I am a law changer. Repeat, I am a law changer. I am a law changer. Say, any help any help that has isolated me that has isolated me any help 
any help that is due unto me that is due unto me any evil power any evil power that has isolated my help that has isolated my help tonight tonight as i pray as i pray i call upon i call upon the god who changes laws the god who changes laws as i begin to pray as i begin to pray lord begin to change laws lord begin to change come up pray Jesus say any evil power any evil power in my life in my life sending away help sending away help sending away my helper sending away my helper any veil any veil that keeps my helpers away from me keeps my helpers away tonight tonight turn my captivity oh lord turn my captivity oh lord turn my captivity oh lord as i begin to pray as i begin to pray manifest here whoever must favor you whoever must give you the discount whoever must give it to you for free whoever must write the letter whoever must accept the deal whatever contract needs to be written whoever must propose whoever must come whoever must go tonight as I pray I pull down my help come on pray Yes, Lord, we pull it down. We pull it down. Come on, pray. 
follows you if you don't know there's a spirit called hardship we've all been through it but some of us broke out you must hate that spirit this spirit causes you when everything is going smooth for everyone you can't catch a break say spirit of hardship, spirit of hardship. that entered my destiny that entered my destiny at birth I pray. Or through sin. Tonight. Tonight. Your time. Your time. Is up. Is up. Come on, pray. <laughs> we cast that demon of hardship. We cast it out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Thank you for watching The End Time Bride. We pray that you were edified, equipped, and empowered through the word to establish the kingdom of God and of his Christ everywhere that your soles of your feet tread. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to reach every end time bride worldwide. Stay blessed.